Hey everybody. So you know I've been posting out about communication and how frustrating it has been. Um, you know, almost um, this massive tug of war and it is involving so many different game players, <laughs> so to speak. And so it is leaving the most patient person on a trying nerve. And, you know, I know for me personally, I've been experiencing it. And yesterday I had a lot of visceral F words coming out of my mouth as the day went on because I was being pulled in so many um directions with conversations where nothing seemed to make any sense and I even questioned if I was speaking a different language or perhaps I was sending a text or an email or even vocally coming across and somewhere in the airways of delivery it was all scrambled so I know I had mentioned a while back about um, words coming through to me and that I was going through some auditory processing things where I would hear a different word that actually made the situation more funny, but at the same time, very real. Um, and I know for a fact that my guides always like to come across with humor because it recalibrates um, my antsy anticipation and kind of wanting to blow my top. So I'm a grown adult and I kind of know how to work with the coping skills and I know how to self-soothe and I know how to break away and remove myself from fiery situations in order to uh, collect everything that's gone awry. But what are our kids doing? What are these children's doing? So one of the kids I work with um, sat down the other day and we were having kind of a comedic little share and uh, I hear, what the hell? And I caught it. They were hoping I didn't. And it was said so matter of fact, like they say it all the time when no one's listening. You see what I'm saying? It came off that tongue super smooth for a very youngin. And so as someone tried to dance around that subject, I looked at mom. Mom didn't hear it. So I said, shall we share with mom? shall we share and mom was like that is not respectful so fast forward um, more conversations began to come out um, as a little time lapsed and our next visit came and now this child is uh, getting a little aggressive you know hitting and elbowing his mom stepping on her foot to get attention uh, a few more, few more foul words coming out of the mouth until mom is, that's it. I'm going to lose it. This is not acceptable. You may not, and you will not get my attention during these times of disrespect. And so then the child begins to deflect and blame it on another child who has had a past history uh, with this particular mother and child of using cuss words and having their mother get involved with an apology, etc. And so now it was being brought to my attention uh, to bounce off what I thought about it. And so yes, yes, the other child is definitely pushing all buttons and then pushing them at school where perhaps a teacher or another one in authority is not hearing so this particular child is exhibiting, you know, like taking their shirt off and, you know, strutting their stuff, showing a little butt cheek. 
And typical, what we would look at is kid behavior, right? And so other kids are going to mimic other kids. But we know on a psychological level, something else is also going on. And they're learning some of this behavior, not only by, say, video games or social media, or perhaps displays in the home from a sibling or a parent or a sitter, but they're also um, learning that they're getting attention when they're displaying this kind of behavior. So, you know, my guides woke me up early this morning to kind of review a little bit of this with the kids. And one of the things they were saying is they were coming back and hitting me real hard on the labeling. They were like, some people might like to be labeled a star seed, but they're all star seeds. So stop making some feel special and some not, or some in tune and attached, and some not. Stop labeling. When the indigos came out, you notice how that faded? It's because that group of kids in the 90s didn't like being labeled. I raised one of them, and I know. And apparently I'm an early on indigo, and I don't like labels, and I don't like brands. Even when I go to buy clothes, um, I will look at what I like, and I may not even know that it's a designer, and I may buy it, I may not. But when people draw attention to it, I back away because I don't like it. So these kids who are much more vulnerable, not as seasoned and experienced to say, I, as a more grown adult, am, aren't liking the labels. They're just not. And so I have, someone asked me the other day, what would you call a star seed? I said, you mean a light seed? They're just light bodies, seeds of light bodies. That's what we all are. And our seeds can multiply and grow and the light can grow or they can just stay a seed and some can not grow and be considered a dud, whatever it is, doesn't matter. But the labeling is what I'm getting real strong that we need to be conscientious about. So I'm very careful with the kids and the parents that I work with not to label, not to categorize, not to put yourself into what might seem like a glory name or what's going to become passe. Um, so be conscientious of that. Now, let's go back to um, the displays that are happening. So as we know, we are bodies that are absorbing everything. We're absorbing all of the energies. And it's critically important to physically get out and work them through the body. If not, we develop all these uh, blockages and kinks. And with children, they don't know what to do with it. They, they need to fight it out. They need to stretch it out. They need to express it through physical play. Um, along with balancing the calming mental play. So I don't know why, but as I'm talking, I'm going closer and closer and closer to the, to the, uh, the video here because it's getting really deep in my heart and I'm on a rocking chair. So let's get these kids out. Let's get them out. It's springtime in the Northern Hemisphere here. It's super important because they've been dammed up.